Silence is the ability to step out of the world and to be passive. All that time that we spend on devices is the time we spend out of the real world. You're either going on to media or you're texting someone or you're going somewhere. But we don't believe that the choice to not do something is a choice. And of course it is. It's hard to find quiet time these days, isn't it? I'm talking total undisturbed silence where we can just be with our thoughts and ourselves. Now, living in New York City certainly doesn't make it easy. So I escaped to Minneapolis to spend time with someone who's been studying noise and silence for decades at his lab. And when I got there, the first thing he told me to do was scream. Uh, really? Yeah. Ah! Okay, now we'll have you do the same thing in the anechoic chamber. In an anechoic chamber, you're 100% absorbent. In a reverb room, you're 100% reflective. And so the reverberation room much more represents the world. And this room much represents that little church that you step into when you want to get away from all the noise and relax. This anechoic chamber was called the quietest place on Earth by the Guinness Book of World Records, and it's become a tourist attraction. All because of the mystery of quiet. The World Health Organization calls noise an underestimated threat. And it's been linked to depression, high blood pressure, heart attacks, and the list goes on. You know, it's often said that being exposed to sounds above 70 decibels is dangerous. However, so the public doesn't understand they have a choice about noise. Silence is therapeutic. And there aren't that many scientists who understand silence in more than one modality. So in acoustics, noise is sound. In lighting, noise is glare. In the thermal environment, noise is draft. And what you find is that the more perceptual stimulus you have, the less you're able to think clearly. And so the louder the noise is, the less cognitively accurate you're gonna be. What this does is it brings people back to the time when they could sit quietly someplace where they're not being entertained, where they're being stimulated in all of their senses by the environment they're moving through. And that's associated with joy. Joy is a feeling that you're in balance and so removing yourself and giving yourself the luxury of, of no high-level stimulus is a luxury. And in fact, it clarifies your mind, it clarifies your emotions, and it clarifies your body. I've been walking around the lakes and around the Mall of Americas, and what I discovered many years ago is it isn't my mind that teaches my body, it's my body that teaches my mind. We need to teach people the experience of being able to step out of the world and being able to step into themselves and being able to enjoy that. You know, we all are looking for those epiphanies, we're all looking for those peak experiences, we're all looking for those things that touch us. And yet, what do we spend most of our energy doing? Trying to entertain ourselves until we go to bed. And if you look at all of the things we spend money on and all the things we think we need, what's the cost of peace? Well, it's zero. And so the highest order thing we can give ourselves, we already own 